Hey everybody, Cam Elder here. A couple weeks ago, it was the Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One of my favorite conventions of the year, and I had a blast as usual. I mean, I think the best part is always hanging out with people. So I got to see Mega Dan, Gaming Off The Grid, Dan Brosman, the Game Beaters. Unfortunately, I missed Dan B, but I did see Evil Dan and Dick Boots. Uh, got to see um, Susasi, um, Chris Pico, Let's see, who else did we see? Uh, finally met Man Boy Cave, uh, so it was super cool to meet him. I know he went there for the first time last year, but I didn't know him at that time. Saw Freak of Four, saw Linda the Gamer Girl, met Chum Nasty for the first time. Um, met J Chip Show for the first time, super cool. Um, hope I'm not missing anybody. Oh, Mega Matt, TJ Kitsune, uh, Rocket Sauce. So a lot, of, a lot of really cool people, had a great time. I think the best part is always just hanging out in the hotel room. Uh, we basically, you know, when we weren't at the convention, but like Friday night and Saturday night, we just hung out in the hotel room. We played NFL Blitz. We had wrestling on. We just drank beer, played video games, and have a, had a damn good time. Uh, I still can't beat Mega Dan in NFL Blitz. He's the only one I can't beat. Uh, but we always have good games. Uh, but it was a good time. Um, I don't take pictures. I always forget. This year, I actually wanted to take pictures again because I haven't done that for a while. But I forgot. So one of these years, I'll remember to do that. But it was a good time. Uh, let's just get to the pickups, right? That's uh, that's what we're here for. Um, so I actually got a few non-Genesis pickups. Um, so we'll go through those real quick. Uh, we'll do the NES first. And I got uh, Felix the Cat. So this was a game I've always been interested in. And it was kind of towards the end of convention. I only had a certain amount of money left. And I was trying to decide if I wanted Mega Man 5, uh, yeah, Mega Man 5, because it's the last Mega Man game I need on the NES, or if I wanted to get a couple games. So the spot where it had Mega Man 5 also had Felix the Cat and other games that I was interested in, and I decided to go with that so I could get more games than just Mega Man 5. And Felix the Cat is a very good game. It's a, a platformer, replace Felix, and you start with like a boxing glove to attack enemies, but as you co collect, um, was it magic? Magic hats, magic stars, something like that. When you collect every 10, a heart shows up and it powers you up. So you can drive a tank, you can ride a dolphin, you uh, go in a, um, a hot air balloon, and all these power-ups give you uh, more attack power to kill the enemies, um, but also um, more hits you could take before you die. And it's just a really good game. Now, it is very easy. You'll get through the game in your first try, no problem. There's there's one hard level, well, it's not even hard, but one where you'll lose lives, possibly, just because it's one-hit kills, but it's honestly not that bad. But it's a really fun game, even though it's short and easy. Uh, definitely worth playing. I don't know if it's worth the price tag it goes for. Um, I definitely did not pay what it goes for, because I bundled it, but it is a really good game. Next on the NES, we've got Battletoads and Double Dragon. So I am a huge Battletoads and Double Dragon fan. I grew up with the SNES version and I loved it. And then after I played that I, and beat it, I eventually got the Genesis version. I've beaten that. And so I still needed the NES and the Game Boy. And uh, I've already streamed Battletoads Double Dragon on NES. I beat it. So now all I need is the Game Boy. And it's a fun game. This is actually a really good game. Uh, it's actually the first version. I don't remember. Uh, if it came out earlier in the year, maybe in the summer, and then that December is when it came out on the Genesis and the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo. But it's a very good version. It, the graphics hold up well, the uh, sounds, it has everything in the game, which is really cool because the Genesis and the Super Nintendo were, more, were much more powerful. But it's just a fun beat em up. It's definitely, I think, easier to play as the Dragons than the Toads, but it's a lot of fun, and I can't wait to eventually get the Game Boy version. And uh, on the TurboGrafx-16, one of the big ones that I wanted to get, I finally found it, New Adventure Island. So super pumped to finally find it. I never see it at conventions. I saw it, um, it was basically what it goes for, but I never see it, so I pulled the trigger. It is in fantastic shape, it is a minty copy, and now I own every Adventure Island game that came out in North America. I even have an NES version of Adventure Island 4, on the uh, that came out on the Famicom that did not come out over here thanks to Eugene and it's great I've already streamed I've already played it it's a fantastic game it plays just like Adventure Island 1 uh, it only has seven worlds I want to say instead of eight uh, it's definitely easier but it is a lot of fun so part of me is very excited that I finally have every single Adventure Island game 
at the same time it kind of you kind of feel sad because like i don't have any more to get i've beaten them all and uh, i really love the series so at least I'll, I'll just play them from time to time but it's a great series all right next reading into the genesis pickups i had now the last genesis update i did i believe was in september so it's been a while and i wanted to be able to give you a good complete up-to-date list on my genesis so there's about eight uh, no, not 18 games, 13 games that I've picked up from September until Midwest Gaming Classic that I want to just run through real quickly. We're not going to do gameplay at all. I'm just going to show you what I got um, just so we get all caught up. So I was originally going to do a video on this and I just never got around to it. But some of these I picked up game hunting with Chris Pico and um, Rocket Sauce. Some of these I picked up at local stores. It's just, it was all over the place in the last 13 months. So, or 13 months, however many months it was. I bought 13 games. God, I can't think. So we got Marvel Land. Radical Rex. The Terminator. Joe Montana, Sports Talk Football 2. No, Joe, Joe Montana 2, Sports Talk Football. Brutal, Pause of Fury. This is really cool because it's actually a game from um, someone in the community, Tumo Fiji. So I was streaming one day and I mentioned that I went to Lacrosse to bring my kids there since one of my favorite restaurants was closing. And I bought some games. He asked me what I bought. I told him that was one of the games. He's like, oh, that used to be my game. So he traded in some games and I have that. So that's super cool. We've got Wayne's World. Brett Hall Hockey, 95. Pit Fighter. I've heard this is a very good version. I think uh, Chris Pico mentioned that. Powerball. Shadow of the Beast 2. Fatal Rewind. War Song. And finally, NBA Live 98. So that might be the last NBA Live game I need. Uh, on the Genesis, so that's super cool. Alright, now let's get to our Genesis pickups. First one was actually the game I bundled with Felix the Cat and Battletoads and Double Dragon, and that is Spot Goes to Hollywood. So I have Cool Spot, I've played it, I've beaten it, it is a very good game, and so now I got Spot Goes to Hollywood. Now this one's slightly different, it's still kind of like an action platformer, but this is the got an isometric view instead of the uh, side scroller that the original one had. Um, I believe TJ uh, mentioned that this game was better than the original. He thought he played down the Sega CD though. So it'll be interesting. It definitely took a while when I was capturing gameplay footage and trying the game out to get used to the isometric view, but it seemed pretty cool from the little I played of it. Then I grabbed the Adams family. So really didn't know much about this, but I was just kind of didn't have much money left and I needed to grab some Genesis games. And I believe this is almost like a Metroidvania. Um, so it sounds like Pugsley, Wednesday, Granny are hidden in, um, imp have been imprisoned in the house. And you got to find them with Gomez. So I know the NES version is like that. Uh, Mega Dan's been playing that one. So I don't know if it's exactly like that. I know the graphics definitely look different. So, but it seemed like a pretty cool game from what I played. Next, we've got Atomic Robo Kid. So this is one I've always seemed interested in because I love the cover out, a cover art, it looks super cool. I had no idea what it was, but every time I saw it at conventions, it was always missing the manual. So I finally got one. I think I bundled this with Adam's family and I got like 10 bucks off, um, but it's actually a shooter, which is super cool. And uh, so I'm excited to eventually play that. Then two big ones off the list that I've been wanting for a very long time. First of all, we've got Mutant League Football. I've had Mutant League Hockey for a while. I never played Mutant League Football as a kid, but I've always wanted it. And again, it's one of those that I never see with the manual. And I finally got it, got it for a good price. And so I'm super excited to play this because Mutant League Hockey is a lot of fun. So if Mutant League Football is just as fun, then we're in for a treat. But yeah, super glad to finally have both Mutant League games on the Genesis. And my last pickup, uh, I believe it was my number one or at least made the list of the top three that I was looking for at Midwest Gaming Classic. And that is RoboCop versus Terminator. Finally, after like three years of looking for this game, I finally have it. And I actually saw multiple copies of this. Uh, this one was probably the cheapest, but it's in very good shape and it had the manual and everything. So I've played RoboCop versus Terminator on the Super Nintendo, which is a lot of fun. 
but the Genesis version always looked better. So I'm super excited to finally play it. Um, I had a ton of fun when I was uh, testing the game out and you could definitely tell that it just seemed like the game played better. So uh, one of the problems I know with the SNES version was the respawning enemies, like basically you killed an enemy and you moved slightly and then went back, they were there. They respawned that quickly. So I don't know if this is gonna have the same issue. That was kind of annoying. It was also some invincibility frames that was weird. If I, want, if I remember correctly, the enemies had invincibility frames and which is never good in video games. So I'm super excited to try that game out again. It's gonna be a while before I get to it in Genesis A to Z, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So there you go, those were the games I picked up at Midwest Gaming Classic and some Genesis games that I picked up since September. And that puts me at a grand total of 490 Sega Genesis games. I am getting closer to 200 left, so there's approximately 700 games in the collection. I'm 10 away from uh, 500, so I think that's kind of my goal for this year. Uh, definitely get 10 more to hit 500. I'm sure I'll be able to do that. I'm sure I'll go past that, but that is the goal right now. Um, still have a ton of loose games and uh, games that are missing manuals, so they aren't complete yet. But still super cool to have 490 Genesis games. So we're making good progress. We'll get there eventually. Sure, it'll be like 10 years from now, but we will eventually have a complete set. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys are at Midwest Gaming Classic, I hope you had a good time. Let me know what you picked up. If you haven't made a video, if you have made a video, put it in the link or in the comments. I'll definitely watch it if I haven't caught it yet. But uh, it was a great time. So thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, this is Captain Algebra, signing off.